Flash is running really hard and seems like he's running away from something. And soon, Barry Allen, the forensic scientist, finds his lab is all in a huge mess after being struck by lightning. Not long after, Barry appears in a restaurant where he has already ordered a large meal and meets Iris West, his girlfriend and wife, for the very first time. Barry Allen is going through some mind-blowing deja vus. They have lunch together after a friendly chat, and Barry sees a stranger whispering his name through the glass window. Suddenly, Flash is transported to somewhere else, where he's trying to get up after suffering huge blows, and the city is in chaos. People are urging him to get up and fight an android, and Barry remembers he is the Flash. Somehow, he is saved by the Superman, and before he could say anything, the Man of Steel goes to confront the android, Amazo. Amazo absorbs his energy, and fortunately, Flash was able to rescue Superman before any lethal damage was done. Flash goes on the offense against Amazo, but he is just too powerful. When Amazo tries to attack them, Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow, saves them with his blasting arrows, and they take the wounded Superman to one of his secret friends. Meanwhile, at the Wayne Manor in the city of Gotham, Alfred Pennyworth, the butler, is eagerly waiting with a bowl of chocolates for trick-or-treaters to show up at the house for Halloween. Bruce Wayne tells him that nobody will show up, but Alfred insists. Selina Kyle, Bruce Wayne's girlfriend, joins him on the stairs and the bell rings. The very first trick-or-treater has arrived. Green Arrow and the Flash hesitantly rings the bell, and Alfred answers the door, still holding the chocolates. He calls for Master Bruce, and Green Arrow is surprised to see they have arrived at Bruce Wayne's house. Bruce greets the two of them, and they show him the injured Superman in the car. Bruce calls them in to attend to Superman's injuries. Flash is running to a different place. This time, Iris and Barry are looking for flowers for their wedding decorations. Iris hands him ten bucks to offer a homeless man, and this man grabs Barry from his head while whispering something to him yet again. Barry Allen is running again. This time, Barry answers the door and greets Bruce Wayne and a young boy named Dick Grayson. He offers them a drink and sends Dick to play with his nephew, future Kid Flash, down at the basement. Bruce and Barry have a discussion about the future of Dick Grayson, as both his parents are deceased from an unfortunate accident happened in their own circus, Flying Grayson's. Meanwhile, Batman is analyzing the injured Superman, and the Green Arrow cannot believe Bruce Wayne is the real Batman. They discuss about the actions of the android Amazo and its creator, the old scientist who works for LexCorp. The next day, Superman is feeling better, and the heroes gather at the dining table for another discussion. That is when Flash suggests the information of the Justice League, and even Bruce Wayne approves the idea. One by one, they gather the members for the Justice League, and only the Green Lantern rejects their offer since he is already part of the Lantern Corps. Once again, the old man sends Barry Allen running down to another timeline. He appears in a run-down central city where he causes a sudden car crash, and all the citizens are afraid of him. Barry guesses it has to be the Earth-3 of a parallel universe, and soon, he confronts the Flash of Earth-3 robbing a bank. Barry is amazed to see the Justice League has converted into the crime syndicate, along with its members Power Ring, Owl Man, Superwoman, and Ultraman. Barry Allen tries to evade their attacks, but gets caught by Superwoman at the end. He then appears back with the Justice League formation ceremony, as Superman is addressing the citizens unveiling their new headquarters, the Metropolis Terminal train station. Seems like it was picked personally by Batman. Superman invites the Central City's Scarlet Speedster, The Flash, to address the public and unveil their name, and Flash is too surprised and excited. Just then, three vehicles are thrown at them from a distance. Superman defends them, but Amazo appears again and starts absorbing his energy, leaving him shell-shocked. The other members try to evade the attacks, and Flash saves the citizens from the falling debris under the guidance of Amazo, who talks to him through the Speed Force. Flash saves both Green Arrow and the Batman from falling debris running through the Speed Force. Vixen and the Martian Manhunter both try to take down Amazo, but he defeats them easily. Flash runs through the Speed Force while talking with Amazo. The Batman and Green Arrow are able to hurt the android, but cannot halt his attacks. Somehow, Amazo is confused with his own actions as his new best friend appears, Lex Luthor in a battlesuit, joining in the attack against the new form Justice League. Lex orders the Amazo to kill Superman, but he is reluctant to do so. Fortunately, Batman is able to save Superman and take him to someplace safe with the others. Batman has had enough, and he is using his orbiting satellites to order an airstrike on both Amazo and Lex Luthor. 
The other members are highly against his decision to make downtown Metropolis a war zone. Somehow, out of the blue, Flash gets a brilliant idea. Once again, Flash runs to the Speed Force, and this time, he witnesses the multiverse, and he is amazed. Soon, he ends up on Earth 3, dominated by the crime syndicate. He has been questioned by the League members, and Superwoman starts to torture the Flash under the command of the Ultraman. Her lasso of submission electrifies him. Only Owlman believes him, as Lex Luthor, who has been killed by them, has spoken about parallel worlds before as well. Learning of this new information, Ultraman is excited to grab the opportunity to go to war and dominate other worlds along with the crime syndicate. Superwoman tries to force Flash to create a pathway, but he cannot do so since there's another Flash in Earth 3. When they try to kill him, the mysterious beggar appears and takes control of Superwoman. He utters ancient slogans and dominates the group, including the Ultraman, and shows them the worlds are ending. Suddenly, he has gone back to the day he gets married to Iris West. John is his best man, and he starts remembering things little by little. Barry goes to see his bride, Iris, before the wedding, although people say it's bad luck. Iris West is a true beauty queen in the white dress, and Barry speaks to her about what's going around in the world. Before he gets to it, he has gone to another world, and this time, he runs through the LexCorp building and finds Anthony Ivo, the creator of Amazo, the android. Anthony tells the story of birth of Amazo, the android, and it's all because of his debilitating hyper-aging condition. He was motivated by Lex Luthor to find a cure and build a super-immune formula, and the result was the indestructible meta-human android, the Amazo. Flash then lands on Earth-3 yet again, and he watches the destruction of Earth-3 with the mysterious old man. Crime Syndicate's Ultraman and Superwoman tries to save the falling buildings, but they are not able to succeed. They watch in horror as their world collapses to nothing. The old man tells Flash that he walks through worlds which are bound to end, and that is his punishment. Flash returns to the battleground where Amazo and Luthor are fighting against the Justice League. Luthor is giving out overriding commands to Amazo to absorb all the metahuman energy. Batman finalizes the airstrike, but Luthor anticipates it and destroys his drone. Lex Luthor is ready to hunt Batman and Green Arrow and orders Amazo to kill Superman, Martian Manhunter, and the Vixen. Just then, Flash arrives with Professor Anthony Ivo. Ivo speaks to his great creation and Amazo tries its best to understand. Luthor gives an overriding command to kill them all, but the Professor tells Amazo to transfer the energy to him and dies in the process. Amazo is confused at the demise of his creator. Batman solves a puzzle for Amazo and points the finger at Luthor. Enraged, Amazo attacks Luthor's battlesuit and breaks it into pieces. He is stopped short of killing Luthor by the Flash. Amazo holds his creator's body and grieves, later switches himself off for good. The heroes have a discussion and Batman suggests they continue to assemble as the Justice League since a team is always better than being on your own. Barry wakes up and in this timeline, he is quite matured and somewhat old as he finds it hard to even get up in the morning. He comes downstairs to find his wife, Iris, has cooked him breakfast. Surprisingly, it's the same odd menu as their first meeting at the restaurant. The couple share a warm moment, and soon, Barry is back on his wedding day, explaining the situation to his bride, Iris West. The couple is standing at the wedding altar, and Vixen is offering the service as she praises the two lovebirds, and suddenly, the air ripples, and then appears the Harbinger, who is on a mission to acquire all the great heroes of Earth. Barry calms down all the heroes, and Iris suggests that Harbinger could save time as four of the heroes are there with them. She transports them to a center hub where all the superheroes from different Earths gather. Hundreds of heroes are present, and among them, familiar faces appear. Batman meets Robin from another Earth, and he is surprised to hear his story. Robin introduces the Huntress, who is Batman and Selina's daughter, and she is very emotional to meet him. Kal-El sees the Wonder Woman, and they share a passionate kiss. She introduces him to the young Clark Kent, who is just dumbstruck to see his mature self. The Fabricator is introduced by the Harbinger as she transforms an underdressed Dr. Hoshi into Dr. Light. Finally, the higher power who called upon this gathering, an officer of the Monitors, comes forward and explains them the harsh reality and the destruction caused by the antimatter waves. He calls upon the hero's powers to stop the destruction of all the realities. In another world, the old Flash and his wife Iris are getting ready to go to work as they show their love for each other once again. On Earth-3, the crime syndicate witnesses the approaching antimatter waves destroying everything in its path. They decide to hit it with all their might, but Flash finds it stupid and illogical, but the crime syndicate decides to give it their all, even the Owlman. 
The power ring confronts the wall first, and no matter how many green wall defenses he puts up, they all vanish. And soon, he too vanishes in a second. Superwoman hurls vehicles towards the wall out of anger, but she soon realizes that nothing can beat it. Superwoman surrenders to the wall at last. The Owlman, realizing the wall cannot be stopped, self-destructs his ship using nuclear power. Johnny Quick doesn't even attack the wall. He just turns back and runs away from it. Flash comes back to the multiverse meeting of heroes as they further observe the destruction by the antimatter wall. Although the Monitor calls for their unity in action, the Question Man comes forward to question on the whole situation. He is joined by none other than the Dark Knight, Batman. Even the Phantom Stranger wants to rebel against the Monitor, but just then, Flash comes forward to prove that it's all true and asks Wonder Woman to lasso him and question about the realities. Clark Kent and Kal-El sees another Earth destroyed by the antimatter and they agree with the Monitor, and so does the Dr. Hoshi. Soon, Batman realizes that the Monitor has planned to build two main teams consisting of genius scientists and superpowered heroes to defend the rest of reality. Whatever they do, they need to hurry it up, it seems, and the Amazing Man is impatient. Flash goes back to Earth-3 and sees Ultraman delivering one final blow at the antimatter wall with no effect whatsoever. Johnny Quick tells Flash to run away from the wave and the two speedsters race away from it. Lucky for Flash, Johnny is injured and struck with an incoming car throwing him onto the wave and Flash hits the speed force and travels away. Back in the world of his old form, Flash goes to the basement and greets the android Amazo. He has kept him functional to aid his abilities for the good of the world. Flash runs on the treadmill and charges Amazo, and the android gives him a full list of guidelines for him and the missus to prepare for whatever ahead of time. The brainy team of scientists are arguing among themselves to decide a proper defense system against the wave. That's when Flash brings them the best coffee they have ever tasted in their lives, each ingredient taken from different Earths. When others were curious about this, Flash speaks about his ability to use speed force to transport from Earth to Earth via particle vibrations. That's when everybody realized that Flash had saved the day. They decide on the humongous project, and they turn to Batman for the planning. Starting with Aquaman of Earth-146, with the use of his deep-sea creatures, they build the towers. At the same time, on Earth-1, Earth-2, and Earth-4, they build massive towers. All the powerful heroes get to work and contribute to this gigantic project in each of their Earths. The old Flash is pulling the cables to the tower with all his might as well. Clark Kent and Kal-El have an emotional conversation, and they notice the wave approaching them at a rapid speed, much sooner than they'd expected. Batman contacts a Monitor satellite, and all the heroes are panicking. Seems like they don't stand a chance after all. Flash is running to get the cables in order, and he is stopped by the mysterious Magic Man, who tells him to find his love, Iris West. Iris is reporting on the antimatter wave when it reaches her, destroying everything around her. Flash arrives at the nick of time and saves her. She is ever grateful for all their time together, and they kiss. But Flash is not ready to give up, and he takes her into the Speed Force as well. That is how they both got old together, and Flash started working together with Amazo. They are building the tower on their own and creating everything while staying in the Speed Force. The old couple is at the last stages of setting up the tower, and Iris falls down with exhaustion and of her age. She passes on while holding on to the love of her life, Barry. Barry continues his work and reaches the tower where Amazo is planted to direct the vibration energy. Amazo is grateful for Barry and Iris for helping him achieve his primary goal, to prolong human life. They set it up in real time and in all the Earths the towers are completed, much to the shock and happiness of everyone. They see Barry starting to run on the treadmill for one last time to save all their lives and world. Barry Allen runs in all his lifetimes, he never ran like that. It was in memory of his beloved Iris. It was to save the lives of all living beings, and the speedster achieved his goal with his android friend, Amazo. The central systems are active, and all the remaining Earths are able to stand against the incoming antimatter wave as all the citizens express their joy and happiness over surviving against the wave. The Monitor is confronted by the Spectre, the personification of Wrath of the Gods. Seems like it was an experiment after all. Barry is battered and bruised, but he is over the moon as they were able to save the worlds. But Amazo is no more. He has sacrificed himself in the name of humanity. Inspector appears to Barry Allen just then. He tells him to correct everything by undoing what happened before the beginning of everything. 
Barry Allen tries to go back, and he sees his younger self becoming the Flash at the blown-up laboratory. Meanwhile, in the land of Scarteris of Warworld, Batman has become a mercenary who has been fighting the people of the Warlord, the ruler of Shambhala. After getting captured, he strikes a deal with the Warlord to show them the way to the castle of the evil wizard. They ride through the valleys of death, passing day and night with utmost courage. Finally, they arrive at a little forest in the middle of the desert where they set up camp to rest. The group questions Batman on his origins and whereabouts, but he cannot recall his past or his origins. Suddenly, they hear a large number of heavy footsteps running towards them. A huge group of rhinos run directly at them, and everyone gets onto the trees apart from the warlord, who is saved at the last moment by the Batman. There comes an ancient prehistoric dinosaur hunting after the rhinos who kills a couple of men in the group, only to be stabbed and slashed in the gut by the warlord. The tribe needs to cross the Death Sea to reach their destination island, and they build a raft with trees in the wood. They run into trouble once again as they are attacked by a giant sea monster. Although it destroys their raft, the clan somehow manages to swim to the shore. On the shore, suddenly through a mystical portal, the old age Barry Allen appears and warns the group about their actions. The group is stunned. Barry is on a new mission to change the fate of the world. At his wedding, the Harbinger appears, but this time, it's not for a mission, but to bring all the heroes to the wedding. Fate has changed, and in this reality, Barry Allen weds Iris West, surrounded by all their happy friends. Meanwhile, at the Monitor satellite, all the heroes are celebrating their survival mission against the antimatter wave. But soon, one by one, some heroes drop down, including the Dawnstar and Brainiac. Realities have changed, and sadly, some of the heroes have not existed in the present reality. This is a story for all humanity, and to deliver this message, never give up. No matter how much the odds are against you, never give up until you win. Thank you for watching Second Look.